Thank you. It is, um, I didn't know I was going to be here until uh, sometime yesterday when I walked into the Peace Now office here for the first time. I just want to tell you about my last two days and an experience that I had 30 years ago and why it felt so important for me to be here today. I came here 30 years ago with my pregnant wife, Catherine. And we were considering naming our soon-to-be, that we didn't know if it was a boy or a girl, but our son, Isaac. We had Isaac as a possible name. So during our stay, we took a ride to somebody said, you should go to Hebron. So I went. We both went. It was a beautiful journey with the terraced hills. <coughs> we arrived to the square. And all of these children came running toward our car. Beautiful, huge eyes of glorious faces from these children. They surrounded us, and we took their pictures with us by themselves. And an elderly man, a beautiful old man, came up to me and my wife and said, would you like me to show you our, our town? We said yes. And he took us through the town, and then he took us into the cave of Machpelah, and I said, what is this? He said, this is where Abraham is. I said, which Abraham? <laughs> he said, the Abraham. <laughs> I said, you're kidding me. He said, no. He said, and this is Sarah, and this is Isaac. I said, which Isaac? <laughs> he said, the Isaac. I said, Catherine, this is a sign. We walked over to the stone of Isaac's grave or tomb, and we rubbed her belly against it in hopes to bless our child, if it was a boy. And that boy is going to be 30 years old on July 10th. Our Yitzchak, our gift of laughter. So Yehuda took me there two days ago, and I came to the same area. And everything was a ghost town. Every beautiful place I saw, the market, where all, everything was boarded up and the doors were sealed, with welding. There was no one around. And the streets were only made for Jewish cars and Jewish people to walk on. And young children that would come by where I was allowed to walk were not allowed to walk. They had to go up this hill all the way around to get to their home, which was right there. And then we went into <coughs> the cave of Machpelah. And it was a very different feeling. I couldn't even get to Isaac's tomb. There was no kind old man and no children with beautiful eyes looking at me. Before I went in, I saw some coffee cups and saucers with the name Hebron. And I thought, oh, that'll be nice. I'll get one of those before I leave to give to my son Isaac. And by the time I left, I didn't want a memory of this place the way it is now. When I listen, I ask, just like all the American Jews say to me, the common phrase is, you're naive if you think there can be a peace. You're naive if you think it can all be worked out. So I asked these questions. I played the devil's advocate with, with, with Yehuda and, and with Hagid. And they believe in the deepest part of their souls that within their lifetimes, there will be peace in this place. And the details will be able to work, to be able to work out. My lesson to myself and to anyone and everyone I meet from now till the end of my life will be the common ground that we all live with, our fears. We are all afraid of many things, all people, all over the world. It is our job for those who do not have the strength to sit at the peace table to walk into the face of everything we're frightened of for as long as we breathe and to not be afraid. The fear will never go away, but the strength will increase and it will live side by side with your fear and your strength will, uh, uh, will overwhelm your fear. I remember I did some concerts for Peace Now several years ago and in a gymnasium, I was stark naked after taking a shower. 
And a man came up to me, a Jewish man in New York, and said, how dare you raise money for peace now? And he started going on about what was wrong with the organization and what they supported. And in my nakedness, I said to him, look, I support peace now. If you want to support peace later, that's your privilege. <laughs> but now is the time for peace. And I want to just conclude by, my, by saying the privilege that I've been given, and, and also I encourage you to get every Israeli that you know, every Jew from anywhere in the world, to take these journeys I've taken over the past two days, and I will take today. They, they wipe away all talk, all maps, all, all things that have no tangible reality. Get there, walk on the ground, see the people, see the barricades, See the, the road systems, and you will never forget. And the greatest privilege I have that has wiped away my sadness and wiped away my fear was to walk into the Peace Now office yesterday and see the youthful faces, your youthful faces, their youthful faces, their energy, and I am certain that this peace process will prevail. It will be the voice of the future now and forever of Israel. And God bless you. Thank you.